pleased to be joined by two men who have etched their name in school history, Harrison Butker and DJ White. And we're going to talk about the kick and the pick. We start with the kick. So Georgia scores, Harrison. They're up three, 18 seconds left. Did you think there was any chance that Tech was going to get you in field goal position? I mean, obviously, as soon as they scored, I knew. I mean, there was the possibility that we were going to have the field goal. So I was like, all right, just get to the net, you know, just plan, you know, like we're going to have to kick the field goal. And it turned out that we did. And I'm just glad I got ready. I'm glad Trevor Strobel and Ryan Rodwell were getting snaps and holds. So, I mean, I had to prepare, but honestly, I didn't think it was a good chance of getting down there. But Justin did a great job. Anthony Harrell did a great job on the kickoff return to get in a field goal position. All right, so Justin makes that run. You realize you're going out for a 53-yard attempt. Did anybody say anything to you before? Uh, no, actually, no. I mean, I actually didn't even know how long the field goal was. I just knew it was kind of long, so I just go, all right, give it your best shot. You know, you have nothing to lose. And uh, Mark Rick called the timeout, which actually helped us, I think, because the uh, clock was going down. And then, you know, I kind of took a deep breath, kind of did a little practice kick, and then went out and did the whole operation. But Coach Johnson or your teammates, did anybody say anything to you? No, they didn't. I just ran out there. The lonesome kicker. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, how fast was your heart beating as you were taking three steps back and two steps over? I actually wasn't that nervous because, I don't know, for some reason I was just like, uh, you know, it's a long field goal and I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really feel that much pressure on the kick for some reason. I was just kind of in the zone and then when he actually called the timeout, I was like, oh, I just wish I could have kicked it. But I don't know. I think the timeout helped. I kind of did a little practice kick, got a little more practice in and then when you kick it. So. All right, so you kick it right when it leaves your foot. What did you think? Uh, when I hit it, I knew I didn't, you know, I guess in kicking terms, I didn't crush it, but uh, I knew I had a little bruise behind me, so I just told myself, you know, don't try to over kick it, just kick it straight, and, and then hopefully it'll go right through. And so when I looked up, I saw the ball going straight, and I was like, okay, as, as long as it makes a distance, it'll be good, so. Did you think, was there any point while it was in midair that you thought, oh no, this might not make it? Oh, uh, well, no, not really. I mean, I kind of saw the ball boys' reactions, and then they were, they were really excited, and then the refs kind of took a while, but then finally they put their hands up, so. Okay, so the, they put their hands up. What do you remember after that? You knew the kick was good. What do you remember? Oh, I just started running. I was so, so happy. I don't know, I had the adrenaline pumping. I, I mean, it was just crazy, and growing up as a Tech fan, and then finally kind of putting ourselves kind of put, put the whole Tech football team in the position to go to overtime, and I knew we had the momentum. I really felt good about this situation. Where did you watch the kick? What were you doing during the kick? Oh, man, I was, uh, it's interesting, like right before he kicked it, I had walked up to Justin Thomas and I said, you know, Harris is going to make this kick, and then we're going to go into overtime and win the game. So, you know, I was just trying to kind of sound confident, man, but, you know, I was on the sideline where everybody else was, and just looking at it, I wasn't sure if he had made it at first, but, man, when I saw them referees put their hands up, I was, I was overjoyed, so. So that set the stage for the pick. So Tech scores, only up by six though, so really need to stop because an extra point could have beat us. All right, second and goal. Hudson Mason drops the pass, take us through what happened. Yeah, so uh, Coach Roof uh, put us in man coverage. So we're in man coverage. Uh, Malcolm Mitchell, I'm on him to the boundary and he kind of gave me a move to the outside. I just kind of sat on it and he came back inside and next thing I know, I got my eyes back to the quarterback and just, just made the catch just made the catch and uh, everything kind of went crazy from there. It's a slant that they had thrown several times. Did you know that it was coming? At what point did you mm -hmm. say, I know what's coming, I can't step in here to intercept this pass? Yeah. Well, interest I mean, interestingly enough, you know, I the slants they were throwing were more to the field, uh, away from my side. So I hadn't really seen that route all game with the exception of maybe once. So um, when he lined up, I, I pretty much was like, you know, this close to the end zone, he's either going to run a fade or a slant, one of those two routes. And, you know, if he's going to run a fade, it's going to be a tougher throw. So the slant, you know, he kind of, like I said, faked outside, came back in and just made the play. Well, I, like everyone else, have watched this replay 3,000 times. <laughs> and you were almost so excited that you really didn't fully yeah. grasp the football till the very end. You yeah. almost dropped it. Do yeah. you realize that going back? Absolutely, I realized <laughs> it. And uh, I didn't want to give the referees any chance of maybe giving it any kind of doubt that I didn't catch it. Um, I caught it. I think I may have bobbled it a little bit, but I made sure I caught it the second time through, fell down, rolled with it, and uh, yeah. And then jubilation. Then jubilation, yep. All right, so lastly, you guys get back to the locker room, check your cell phones. How many messages did we have, Harrison? Uh, my Instagram blew up. I got about 500 followers on Instagram and about 400 on Twitter, and then text messages. It actually took me the whole bus ride to respond to all the Facebook and uh, text messages, but it was really crazy. Similar experience for you. Similar experience, man. You know, I had about 50 text messages or so, and 
a lot of Twitter and Instagram notifications. So, uh, like you said, it pretty much took me the whole bus ride as well to kind of get, every, get to everybody. Yeah. And now you guys realize, lastly, the magnitude of this. The people that have talked to you told you how much this means to them. So, how special is that to you? It's very special. Uh, similar to Harrison, growing up in Georgia, growing up a Tech fan, and uh, pretty much being surrounded by Bulldog fans my whole life. But that's kind of what my, what my family is. Not my mom and dad and brothers, but everybody else. So. Uh, so it's really special, man, to be able to play a part in this rivalry, and it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Harrison? I mean, I'm actually really similar. My mom was a Tech fan, my dad was kind of both, but everybody else was Georgia fan, so the whole time before the game, they were like, I'm rooting for Georgia, but I'm rooting for you when you're kicking. So, I mean, it was a great feeling. My whole school was Georgia fans. All my friends were Georgia fans, so great win for the program. I mean, it was an awesome feeling finally being Georgia. All right, guys, congratulations. Good luck against the Knowles. Thank right, you. Thank you.